Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Clapham in southwest London to Canary Wharf in east London. This ride takes about 45 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same journey takes around 40 minutes and requires a change of tube line, so it won't take much longer at all to cycle, and it may be more convenient. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to the channel supporters on Patreon. If you'd also like to contribute, there's a link in the description. All right, let's get going. So we're starting on Clapham Common next to the Temperance Fountain, but if you want to, you can start this route from further back on the Wandsworth side of the common. I recommend checking the brilliant Safe Cycle London map that I always link in the description of the videos to see which paths will help you get to the start point. I use that map extensively in planning all the videos and I also feed things that I find during the ride back onto the map as believe it or not there isn't actually a comprehensive map of all of London's cycle infrastructure. I think Safe Cycle London probably does the best job although there are other options available. For this route we're starting on Cycleway 5 which used to be known as Quietway 5. This is mostly a backstreet route, avoiding the main roads. It should be pretty familiar by now to anybody who watches a lot of videos on this channel. After that, we're joining Cycleway 3, which is a protected route down main roads. That'll also be really familiar to anybody who's watched the channel a lot. While this route doesn't cover a huge amount of new ground compared to videos I've done before, I think it's a good example of how you can use the central trunk routes in London's cycle network to connect lots of different destinations once you connect them to feeder routes at each end. Cycleway 5 is pretty good and reasonably direct, although not quite as direct as the main road. It basically runs parallel to the A3 and is a good alternative for less confident cyclists, or honestly people like me who just prefer a more relaxing ride on the back streets. Until we can get segregated lanes on the main roads, which this isn't a replacement for to be clear and we do need, I think it's a really good alternative to just riding in the bus lanes. The route on Cycleway 5 was improved significantly in around 2020 when Lambeth Council introduced this modal filter here. You'll see that's a no entry sign over this railway bridge. This makes Larkle Rise, the road that we're going on now, a much less useful through route for motor traffic and as a result it's kept it much quieter. However, I would say that the area around here north of Clapham does need a proper low traffic neighbourhood to remove the last of the through traffic. I suspect the council probably will get around to doing that, but as I understand it, it's not going to be their highest priority and is probably a few years off. That's because Lambeth Council's programme of introducing new low traffic neighbourhoods has had a reprioritisation recently, and they want to prioritise areas with high levels of deprivation. While there is certainly deprivation in Clapham, it's not quite to the same extent as in neighbouring areas like Brixton. So, I would expect to see new LTNs rolled out in the uh, vicinity of Brixton Town Centre probably next, or at least after the long-standing plans to put traffic filters in in Brixton Hill and Streatham Wells, which have been on the cards for a while and I think are pretty close to delivery. That said, as you can see from the level of traffic here, the closure on Larkle Rides has already made a big difference, especially on the streets that we're interested in for this video, which is the route of Cycleway 5. For new viewers who are unfamiliar with the route of Cycleway 5, note that I'm following these letters on the ground that say C5 and also signs on some signposts which tell you which way to go. Of course, after you've watched this video, you'll basically know which way to go anyway. If you want a little bit of extra help, then you can also download the digital map of the route which I put a link to in the description. That gives you a GPS GPX file and you can use that on whatever app or device you use to look at maps. I know some people prefer to do it that way, so there you go. Talking of LTNs, Thorn Road here, which we're on just now, is one of the streets that can at times still feel a little bit on the busy side and would probably benefit from having through traffic removed. That said, it's not currently a deal breaker and I do think, given its short length, you'd probably still be okay to cycle this route with kids. We're still following Cycleway 5 now and as we cross into Adalbert Terrace, we're now also entering the Oval Low Traffic neighbourhood. The cycling conditions here are really pleasant and it makes this section of the route a joy to ride. 
This little triangle of streets southwest of Oval is also, I think, a really good example of how sometimes a backstreet route can be more direct than going on the main road. For instance, if you're coming from the direction of Brixton and want to get to Vauxhall, you can actually cut the corner by going through here, and not only is it quieter, but actually more direct. Depending on how backstreet routes are done, they can also have more priority than main road routes. For instance, if you were cycling on the A3 instead of going through here, you would have to wait at traffic lights, whereas you don't have to do it on these streets because there aren't any traffic lights. Of course, not all backstreet routes are equal, and some are extremely wiggly and windy, don't take a direct route, have low priority, and aren't even that much quieter anyway. Sometimes, only segregated cycle lanes on the main road will do. Hopefully, now there's a funding deal between Transport for London and the government, there will be a few more of those coming up. They are quite expensive to build compared to LTNs, and they do require a bit of cash. Believe it or not, even schemes that are delivered by boroughs rather than TfL often rely on TfL cash. So that's why you haven't seen too many recently, while there's been this big dispute between central government and London's government over how much cash TfL should be getting. And we can get more great protected cycle tracks like this. And as you can see, it's not just people on bikes who benefit. Mobility scooters can as well, and I absolutely love to see people using them. Some people have suggested that these lanes should be rebranded mobility lanes, but frankly, I think it's better if we just point out the wider benefits at every opportunity. One thing that's quite good about Cycleway 5 is, although it's largely on back streets, it also takes this route on the main road with a protected lane. And I think the fact that the designers understood that you can't just go on back streets everywhere, sometimes the best option is actually just to build a proper segregated lane is what makes it good. Other good routes like Cycleway 10 also take that approach. Just a quick note here, make sure you check as you cross that cycle path there, as people can come through that tunnel quite quickly and it is a bit of a blind corner. I'd really recommend indicating as well so anybody behind you knows that you're about to pull off and slow down as you approach the junction. An alternative way of getting into Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens that avoids that bit of conflict there is to take the Toucan Crossing as you approach the junction and instead cross into the main entrance to the park. But that does come with its own issues. For instance, it's quite difficult to actually get to the Toucan Crossing from the cycle track, particularly if people are coming in the opposite direction. And sorry, for those unfamiliar with the lingo, a Toucan Crossing is like a Pelican Crossing, except you can also cycle on it. You'll recognise one because it also has a cycle symbol, as well as a green man. And if you hadn't clocked, it's actually a little bit of a joke by highway engineers, Toucan as in two can cross at once. Funnily enough, a slightly rarer version of that is called a Pegasus Crossing, and that has a picture of a horse and also allows a horse to cross. I think fundamentally they are legally the same thing as you can always cycle on a bridleway. Or at least they're the same thing if you're on a bike, as I'm not sure you can always ride a horse in a cycle lane. One thing I'd like to see on this section of the route, by the way, is a little bit more priority for the cycle route as we cross roads. For instance, back then we crossed Black Prince Road and we had to give way. And we also have to do it here. It would be nice to see a parallel cycle zebra crossing introduced across both those streets, which would fix the stop-start nature of the route here. Another one could be used here as well. Maybe that's something that could be considered if there were ever a Black Prince low traffic neighbourhood removing through traffic from this area in the future. That's another one for Lambeth to look at, I think. Also, it would be great to trim those trees just over the cycle path there, as they do make using that little two-way stretch on Sale Street a little bit difficult. If you need to get your bearings, we're currently between Lambeth Palace on the left and the Imperial War Museum on the right. And that is the southwest main line running into Waterloo on that viaduct to the left with businesses in the railway arches. I've always liked the look of that pub on the right, the Pineapple, although I have yet to pay it a visit. The junction of Hercules Road and Kennington Road, which we're coming up to at the end of this street, is very simple in this direction. However, in the opposite direction, you need to use the Toucan Crossing to make it across the road. You can see it on the right there where the white van is, and that will allow you to come into Hercules Road, turning right across it. Here we're using what's called a cycle gate. You wait for the green light here, and then you have to wait for a second green light to cross the main junction. The point of that is always to put you in front of the cars to make the junction safer. However, it does also have the effect of slowing you down because you'll basically always get a red light no matter when you show up. 
We're now on Bayliss Road, which has some really excellent cycle tracks, and these are exactly the sort of thing I'd love to see on every main road in London. It would really make getting around the city an absolute joy. And make sure you pay attention to the zebra crossings, which allow people to access the bus stops and stop if you see any pedestrian trying to come across them. That pitched glass roof on the left there is Waterloo Station. It's the back end of it, and you can access the station through the cab rank if you go up the ramp. We are now going past the Old Vic Theatre on our right, and this is famously located on a street called The Cut. Now, look at the Urban Realm stuff that's gone on here. You can see parklets and a lot of seating and extra greenery, which, along with this traffic filter coming up here, making it no longer a through route, has made it really a really pleasant place to be. It was previously extremely heavy on the traffic and not a particularly nice place to sit. Interestingly, this glass building looming up ahead of us is one of the headquarters of Transport for London, right opposite Southwark Tube Station. We're now leaving Cycleway 5 and we're turning on to Cycleway 6. This is a protected main road route going up Blackfriars Road and it's really one of the gold standard cycle routes in London. It helps you get from Elephant and Castle all the way up to Farringdon in north central London. And we're not going to be going that far, we're just joining it here and we're going to be going up to the embankment on the other side of Blackfriars Bridge. As you can see, at busy times, like commuting hours such as this, there's absolutely loads of people using it. And although I do spend a lot of my time telling people about the better backstreet routes in London, I think there is genuinely a massive benefit to having segregated routes on main roads like this. And that's because you don't have to do any research to work out this is there. These people were probably going to be cycling up Blackfriars Road anyway, and it just so happens that there's excellent cycle infrastructure on the street and they don't have to mix with traffic. It's also a lot more visible to people who don't cycle and maybe wouldn't have previously considered it an option until they saw a nice protected cycle path on the edge of the street and thought, hey, that actually could work pretty well for me. I'm going to use that. The junction here is a little bit counterintuitive. We obviously want to go right, which is east, but to do that, we have to go left to go down this old essentially sort of urban motorway um, junction which has been repurposed into a really good bit of cycle infrastructure albeit with slightly counterintuitive directions when you get to the end of here we're going to do a real hairpin so make sure you wait and wait for a gap in the cycles and then wow we're going back on ourselves and what we do is we loop under blackfriars bridge and we're now on cycleway three which is another gold standard route in London, we get this really great smooth wide lane with a protected curb between us and the traffic. And it's a really pleasant ride and really intuitive and just a good advert for taking your bike. Just coming up here, there's a stretch on Castle Baynard Street. This is actually not in a segregated lane. It's actually its own street and you're on the carriageway. Although it might as well be because it's very rare to see any traffic on here as it's just a service entrance for the buildings on the left. However, it is worth pointing out that it's not a segregated lane because you might be surprised if you were suddenly to see somebody driving up here. So just keep aware that you could see a car on here. Castle Baynard Street is of course named after an old Norman fortress which stood on this site which used to be on the edge of the Thames and accessible by water until the Thames was embanked and made a lot narrower than it used to be, reclaiming a lot of the land here. That's also why this street is called Thames Street, because it used to be essentially in the Thames, or at least running alongside it. Now, this section of Cycleway 3 may seem unremarkable. It's not a particularly interesting part of town, but I would say that the infrastructure on this street is probably the most transformational bit of when Cycleway 3 was put in. It really has made a huge difference. And that's because there isn't really an alternative route through this southern section of the city. There must have been a real political battle to get hold of this road space for a cycle lane. And without it, honestly, we wouldn't have a cycle network because you wouldn't be able to get from the West End to East London if it didn't exist, as there really isn't an alternative route. There's no quiet street alternative that I'm aware of, and there isn't a segregated lane running on any of the other streets that come down here. One thing I do like to point out here is that on your left you'll always see a lot of bollards and you're actually allowed to cycle through these. They all have little blue signs on them that say shared space. And if you work in the city of London, these can be a really useful way to access different little corners of the square mile from this segregated lane. So 
if you need to get to Cannon Street, Monument Street, St Dunstan's, Cross Lane, Suffolk Lane, Dowgate Hill, or anywhere like that, cycling down this segregated lane and coming off on your left when the right street comes up is probably the easiest way to do it. You can just about see the Tower of London on your right there and of course Tower Bridge and considering that this is such a famous and historic part of London I actually do think it's quite sad that it really just has a busy road going through it. I think so much more could be done with the public space around here especially considering the pavements especially on the weekends are absolutely thronged with tourists. One thing that's absolutely needed is a way to cross from this segregated lane across the junction to go down to the right as there's actually a more or less pretty good way of cycling to Wapping via St Catherine's docks apart from the fact that there isn't really an easy way across this big mess of roads. We could have something like we have here on the left which is the Mansell Street Cycleway which connects us on Cycleway 3 here to Cycleway 2 which goes up to sort of Whitechapel and even up to Stratford. That filled in a real missing link and it would be nice to see another one filling in that other one at the junction on the right. For those interested, on the left that railway viaduct is the DLR going into Tower, Gateway and to Bank. Um, and then even further to the left, that's the Coast to Coast Railway heading into, I believe, Fenchurch Street. Though we're still on Cycleway 3, the route actually reused an older piece of cycle infrastructure down Cable Street here. And the segregated track that we're on is a lot narrower than the previous section that we cycled down earlier. This isn't a huge problem as it still does keep you separate from the traffic, but it is sometimes at peak time not really wide enough to cater for all the people who need to use it. That said, I do actually really like this as it does show what can be done on a reasonably narrow street if a highway authority puts its mind to it. In this next stretch past the junction, do keep an eye on the surface of the cycle path. You can see there are trees, which is very nice, but the roots from the trees can make the surface sometimes a bit uneven. Also, look on the right here for that mural. That's a mural to the Battle of Cable Street, which was a famous confrontation between the people of the East End and the British Union of Fascists in 1936. Its anniversary is coming up in a couple of weeks on the 4th of October. The mural is great and apparently took a long time to paint. It was started in 1979 but not finished until 1983 um, and honestly it's fantastic. It's uh, a real work of art and you can stand there for hours and look at it honestly. Really recommend if you've got the time get off your bike and have a little stare and just take in the details. I'd like to see more murals like that actually around London and other cities in the UK I think they were a really positive uh, type of public art, they're accessible, everyone can enjoy them and depending on the subject they don't just brighten the place up but they can give people a real connection to the history or politics of an area. They needn't be expensive and uh, you know there are plenty of artists in this country who I'm sure would love to be commissioned by uh, local councils to do them so definitely something worth thinking about. If you've got any ideas for murals you'd like to see in specific places around London then let me know in the comments below. Just coming up here, the cycle track switches sides on that uh, very, very, very sharp turn. That is not a great design, to be honest. Um, there is at least a drop curb, so you don't have to follow on the blue line. But particularly going in this direction, where there could be cars coming from behind you, do really, really make sure you look before crossing. Um, we come up to this Toucan crossing here, and we press the button. I've actually noticed that the buttons on that crossing are often broken, and it's often different buttons that are broken. I don't know what the issue is there, but there's some sort of maintenance problem here. And we go through St. James's Gardens. Here, um, you have to cycle on the right-hand side of the line, but unfortunately, the, the line is very, very narrow, uh, or rather, the right-hand side of the line is very narrow, so it's not wide enough for a two-way track. So if you meet people coming the other way, it can get very, very tight. Exiting the park in this direction, we actually get a, uh, a cycle lane. It's a contraflow cycle lane going in the opposite direction down a one-way street. And it is, for the most part, lightly segregated with these uh, plastic wands, which, you know, they uh, it's nice to have a bit of segregation. In the opposite direction, you are on the carriageway. But this street is, and the streets around here, are very, very quiet. There isn't really a useful through route for traffic through this part of town. So I'm very happy cycling on the carriageway down here. And you can see it's a useful route into Canary Wharf. 
Talking of which, we can now see the big skyscraper looming up ahead of us. That's one Canada Square. That's the sort of archetypal Canary Wharf skyscraper. It used to be the tallest building in the European Union, although it's long been overtaken and is no longer in the European Union. Um, that uh, There are several ways to get in. You could actually turn off right here where those white columns are. There is a, uh, a sort of shared cycle path there. But if you did that, you'd have to lug your bike up some steps. Um, you could also turn off right here and go much the same way. You go along the front of the Thames. Some people do that. Um, if you don't mind carrying your bike up steps, you could certainly go that way, then just cycle through the middle of Canary Wharf. We're actually going to go a different way, which doesn't require a dismount and um, is arguably, I think, a better way in. So first, what we need to do is we follow the cycle way. So the signs actually direct us to this crossing here. It's a, it's a cycles only crossing and note the green lights and we go across. We go onto this quite unusual cycle path here. Unusual because it's angled. It has very sharp angles. Not really how bikes move. They tend to be quite smooth. Um, it's not really a path either. It's just sort of some paint painted on the tarmac, but it's fine. As we get to this crossing here, we're not going to cross the road. We're going to turn right and note the blue and white shared space sign here. You're allowed to cycle on this pavement here. It's a shared space. And we come out around the back of Cineworld, which is a cinema. And that's kind of an ugly building to put next to these quite nice old warehouses, I have to say. I think that was a bad choice by developers. Now, we want to get to the other side of those warehouses. So we're going to go down Hertzmere Road. And uh, this street is not super quiet, but it's also not super busy. It has kind of annoying plastic speed bumps on it. I wish they wouldn't do that. As we enter this path here, note there are two signs at the entrance there. You probably didn't catch them, but one was five miles an hour, um, which implies a speed limit, which also implies motor vehicles. Um, and you can see there are places driving here. And the other was a no motorcycle sign, which implies that you're allowed to cycle here. And I also saw no difference on this bridge so as far as i can tell you're allowed to cycle on the bridge and um, do do it very very cautiously as it is obviously shared with pedestrians now normally we would go off left there and we could follow the riverfront path all the way down to uh to sort of one canada square but unfortunately the riverside was closed so we're gonna end here today but we are in canary wharf so i hope you enjoyed that guys i thought hope you found it useful if you enjoyed it, do hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're alerted to new videos. And uh, if you really, really enjoyed it, you can always take a look at the Patreon as well. Um, if you're a sort of a regular viewer, always appreciated, but absolutely not mandatory. Um, only for those who want to. And uh, yeah, really hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Any comments, particularly interested in ideas of murals. Um, definitely would love to chat about that. Um, but also, you know, suggested routes and ideas, comments on the route itself. And uh, yeah, see you again next time. Thank you very much.